Hey guys, how's it going today? Welcome back to another video of uh, patch notes. Um, so welcome to the Good Weather Patch Notes. Uh, good Weather is the title of the uh, the patch this time around. Um, so yeah, there's not really too much to say, but this patch is massive. Very huge. I'm not going to be covering the whole thing. Um, there is going to be a link to the patch notes in the description down below. Uh, if you want to look at it yourself um but the big uh the first very first thing that we see here is that the main menu screen has got redesigned um so it now finally shows the buildings that we actually see in game versus you know buildings that are just white blocks um so there's also some more information here as well um so you can actually see that there's it looks like there's a next update um, counter now as well so hopefully that does display information that's accurate so that way we can get a little bit more info on when the next updates are coming along um, the next thing is is now whenever you're going to go make a new game is there's going to be a game customization screen so you're going to actually be able to choose when natural disasters happen um, or well how frequent they happen um, not when but how frequent they happen um, so this could lead to some interesting things of uh, going like chaos runs where, you know, uh, they just happen as often as possible. Um, and the same kind of applies to wild animal attacks. So choosing when wolves and such like that, uh, how often those are able to attack. Um, the other thing is, is exile attacks. So um, that's the exact same thing as wild animals and natural disasters. There's really nothing that inherently different about them um so yeah uh this could lead to some interesting runs though that i might do where we just set those to as often as possible and just see what happens um see how difficult the game is um so the next thing is is they're changing the way that we actually uh start the game with the nuggets that we start off with um so now we can actually personalize the two nuggets that we start off with giving them unique traits um and such like that we also get to choose their skin color too um which is some pretty interesting things uh i think this will add to a little bit of the replayability um as you get to choose uh several of their perks um and so um, the first perk that we have for these nugget traits um, is True Believer. So True Believer, this is a trait that seems to increase the gain in creator points, which can help newer players. Uh, one downside to this is the believers believe in a UFOs, so you will have to deal with more of them. So you're going to have to eventually end up with more UFOs, and so it might cancel out the amount of creator points that you gain, but probably not um next one is arnold um th this trait is they consider it to be an easy mode and, but it kind of in my eyes this is a trait that might just speed up the game as it allows your nuggets to deliver supplies faster but they eat a lot more food um so this one can be difficult for the early game as sometimes food can be scarce so you do have to kind of be mindful of a lot of these traits uh, when starting out, um, because a lot of them do consume a lot more food. Uh, Matinator, um, we know this one. Um, basically, you know, the the nugget's going to mate five times really quickly, um, but then they're going to pass away. Um, so, honestly, this one is this one is pretty good. I I find it to be much better in the late game when you're not really. Um, you know taking the time to mating all of the nuggets because let's face it there's so many nuggets that you can't really feasibly mate them all so you can get this perk to just do it for you and you know one nugget dying isn't that bad of an issue but uh you do have to be mindful as you know i mean yeah the nuggets are gonna die but uh, you have to you have to kind of be mindful of the fact that you're going to be able to use creator points as well to mate them uh instead of using this perk um or this trait so kind of to me it kind of doesn't feel that useful in the early game um fugitive fugitive uh, it just is bad to me um so it allows your nuggets to move faster but nuggets may steal some of the resources 
Um, this just seems more annoying than useful. That's really all I'm going to say on that one. Uh, nuggets are um, so Nug Norris is nuggets are very strong and build faster, but nuggets can cause damage and kill other nuggets. Um, when I say kill other nuggets, it seems that they're not really saying that it will that one nugget could outright just kill another nugget. It seems like they'll deal damage to another nugget, but if you have multiple Nug Norrises around, then one nugget who gets hit a whole lot of times could end up dying. Um, and so again, this one kind of, it just doesn't seem like good early game. Um, especially <laughs> I have a feeling if I ever to, was to run this perk, uh, my nuggets would just end up killing each other and then we'd have like one nug Norse left and that would just be it. Um, so the next one's Greenlander. Greenlander allows your nuggets to have a chance to plant a tree, but they consume more water. This one does not really sound bad at all, but they do say that this, this is not an easy trait, so maybe not so easy. Um, honestly, the only way that we can tell, though, is by playing it ourselves, so we'll see how it goes. Um, next one is Highlander. So Highlander is basically the, the perk that allows elderly to... Um, it seems like elderly folk are able to breed, um, so that's great because it allows you to, you know, uh, get more baby nuggets from your population, but it does seem like it causes infections pretty rapidly, so you do have to be mindful of that. Um, for me, I am going to pass on this perk because I know for a fact that one, if I was to use it, my whole population would get infected. Um, next one is Coffin Dodger. Coffin Dodger is one that we've seen before as well. And this one basically allows a nugget when they die, they get converted to a zombie um, and kind of start this spread. Um, so this one sounds like it could be a lot of fun. Um, it do definitely does sound like it could be a little bit harder, um, but I, I don't recall off the top of my head exactly what the zombie nuggets do if they actually do cause people to not work at all or if they just kind of continue doing what they're doing but they're considered to being undead um so another thing is is after reading all of this uh, you get kicked right in the shin as it tells you to play through the game to unlock these um now maybe for us experienced players that will already be unlocked but i kind of doubt this um with some of the things that they've done to us in the past um, with these updates, they don't really seem to track the history of how much you've played and such. So chances are now you'll actually have a chance of unlocking these as you play. Um, so we also have some new quests now too uh, that hopefully will not be broken um, as it seems like a couple of the previous quests that they had um, or kind of a little broken, but the first one is called Overpacked Quest. So this requires you to build a courier's hut and then deliver packages to the appropriate mailboxes. Um, this one sounds kind of cool, but I do wonder what this will unlock for us. It doesn't really feel like it's going to be that beneficial to us as a player um, or to us as the, you know, as the general civilization. Um, I don't know if it's just going to be like 15 believers or something on the sorts of that. Uh, maybe it will be a park, but I highly doubt that considering they didn't state it. Um, next we have uh, sitting on powder quest. This just requires you to select a pro gun nugget within an, within an election. Um, again, it doesn't really tell us anything that we get from doing this. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll just have to see and experience these quests for ourselves to see just how helpful they are to us. Um, so a couple of really cool improvements and balance changes they did for us. Um, like, this is actually one of the biggest changes we've got in this, and that is the water system. So the water system is now going... Uh, I mean, the wells and reservoirs have now been merged together. Um, and I think this is a really interesting change and hopefully will result in us having a lot more room in our cities as, you know, we don't have to build separate entities, which are wells and reservoirs. And also given the fact that we, uh, you know, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just going to be super nice. Um, this will also make it so that, uh, you know, the, um, 
man, words escape me. Um, this will also make it so that when you're expanding your civilization, um, you're also expanding your reservoirs. You're kind of expanding onto the water that you're able to um, keep as well at the same time, which is actually, I think, really nice. Um, so, um, but that's, uh, so yeah, they've got some really nice looking uh, pictures here of what these will look like. So that's something that's really exciting for in the game. Uh, so the next thing is the perk finder. So the perk finder is pretty interesting. Um, this basically allows you to go to a perk that let's say is later on in the tree. Um, and it will actually tell you, well, obviously it will tell you the requirements that you need, but you can actually now press on this eye icon here. Um, and that will actually bring you to the perk that needs to be unlocked. So we'll, kind of i mean i don't really more thinking more about it actually i don't really see the the usefulness of this because the tech tree itself already tells you this um i guess except for certain instances like material refinement some things are locked behind material refinement that are not directly linked to it so in that sense i do understand it um so another thing that they've uh changed is the uh well improved on is the way that traits are and skin color inheritance works um which i think is a great thing um you know something that i've always tried to do is get a population that's just totally blue but that's very difficult when the, the nugget kids are not blue themselves um but now we can actually see uh you know the a shift in color um based off of that so i think that's pretty cool um another thing that's kind of minor i don't think it's that important is street light simulation this basically just makes it so that when uh then when the lights are you know uh illuminated on the roads um they'll instead of instead of going a hundred percent on they'll now flicker on instead of uh just turning a hundred percent on um so a little minor thing um yeah, it's not really too big of a, a deal. Um, but I think uh, fish respawns in the lakes is amazing. Um, so finally, they allow us to have the fishing piers be more useful in the lake game. When, you know, previously a lot of lakes would have no fish at all because you've overfished them or because you've drained a lake entirely and now that it's refilled, there's no fish. Now those fish will actually come back. So as you fish in a lake and as it goes down, um, I'm guessing that each season or each year, um, a certain percentage of those fish will come back. Um, and it seems like it's based off of the amount of water in that lake um the other thing is is that um so even though a lake has been entirely drained um normally you would imagine if the lake was to be filled again that those fish would not come back at all but that is actually not the case those fish will come back so even though you've totally drained the lake it does not matter now uh, a lake a lake that has no water in it though does have zero fish so if it did originally have 5,000 fish in it and it goes down to zero for the water level there is now zero fish in there and that does make it so that when it gets filled a little bit it starts off at zero so that is something to be mindful on um, there's also the construction pause button now so you're all uh, you know yeah I mean this wasn't uh, this wasn't a thing that I really wanted, but it does kind of, it would be kind of helpful to have a little bit of more control over the construction. So, you know, it's kind of nice. Um, there's also now a save game option. So uh, in the escape menu, there was previously a save, save game option, but it was not highlighted or pressable until you had the archives. Um, now, you can actually save the game instantly before the archives is even built. But it, you has you still have to place the epicenter. But once the epicenter is placed, then you can go ahead and save the game. Um, this seems to have been a, uh, a an option that they included for newer players. Um, 
because honestly, I think a lot of experienced players kind of knew about this and just kind of, you know, placed the archives. Um, the archives, though, is still going to be useful. Um, it's going to be the only way that the game actually autosaves, so keep that in mind. You still will want to build the archives um, because you never know when the game's going to crash. Um, continue button was added to the main menu. That's cool, dandy, uh, easy, easier than, I guess, loading the game up. Doesn't really matter too much, though. Um, save filters, so this basically applies to when you're going through the building menus and also nugget menus. Um, so now whenever you go there and you change the filters, let's say, um, those filters will actually be saved for f up to five minutes. So when you're going in and out of those, uh, when you're going, going in and out of those menus, the, the filters will remain the same, um, which can be useful when you're tracking down certain buildings or uh, when you're tracking down certain nuggets. Um, but that's also kind of not that big of a change, pretty minor. Um, let's see here. Uh, so the next one that's pretty major is improved nugget speed on the road. So they have finally made it so that nuggets move a lot faster on the roads, which is great. Uh, this will speed up couriers, um, engineers, anyone really. Um, so yeah, that's just an overall positive change. Um, the other one is improved couriers and general transportation AI. So they finally made the AI a lot better for the couriers. Uh, now they're going to be going on the most efficient route and the fastest. So there's no longer, uh, you know, nuggets transporting goods across the whole world. They'll now try to look at um, who is the closest to certain uh, objects pick up those objects and then go to the closest building that needs those objects versus you know going across the globe um, the same thing uh, the same thing applies to the engineers as well so they'll now actually you know use the roads and other things to um, you know to their advantage um, so they're they're going to take the fastest way possible to wherever they're going which is great um, these are two changes that are going to honestly uh, be very impactful but also might not be noticeable um, and they might not be noticeable just because of the game uh, you know feeling better I guess um, but uh, you know we'll have to see um, another great change as well is the building boundary changes so they finally made it so that the buildings are you know the the amount of space that's required to build a building is much closer to its actual um physical properties versus having like this thing that looked like it was you know half the width of the building itself uh, uh um spread out so like uh the point is you're going to be able to build buildings a lot closer to each other now which is great. You're going to be able to build them closer to the roads, and this will just make it so that you can get more buildings in a tighter area. Um, there's also countless bug fixes, which is great. Um, it looks like they, you know, all the UI and art they've changed as well. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's really about it on these patch notes. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you guys did like this video, then please do hit that like button. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, uh, please leave them in the comments. Um, and as always, if you guys are brand new to the channel, then please do hit that subscribe button. And as always, I would like to thank my Patreons for supporting the channel. If you too would like to join the Patreons, then there is a link in the description below where you can go ahead and donate. Thank you all for watching. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys in the next episode.